Hey guys, it's Soleh. In this short video, I want to show you a case where running Monte Carlo simulations helped me avoid a huge loss. And the thing is, I did not expect that at all because normally when I use Monte Carlo simulations, I do it to see, for example, whether or not my strategy is overfit. Or considering my risk tolerance, it helps me know how much position sizing I want to do. But the case that I'm talking about now has nothing to do with those. So let me show you what I mean. Now this is the strategy that I'm talking about. You see this equity curve, it looks awesome, right? It basically just keeps going up and up. Now it is for the Trump meme coin and the duration is almost six months and everything looks great. Now the PNL is 30%, but with the max drawdown of minus 8%. Now considering my risk tolerance is usually minus 30%, that means I could have easily multiplied this by a number such as like three and then my PNL would have been near 100 right so that would have been fantastic but here's the thing the win rate is 100 percent right so it means basically it's never losing and yes it is a short only strategy and the average holding time is 24 hours which is a bit too high considering the time frame of the strategy was only 15 minutes and the sharp ratio was 2.55 and the calma ratio was 8. So this looks fantastic. But if you've been following me for a while, you know that recently I released this Monte Carlo feature, right? So when I ran it for this strategy, just to make sure it's not overfit, because the results are like too good to be true, especially this 100% win rate. So that is definitely too good to be true. And I wanted to see some losses because if the strategy has no losses, I just cannot trust it because it basically means it's like a martingale strategy, which we all know makes you a lot of money until you actually get liquidated, right? So seeing a win rate of 100% is very scary and risky. Now, let me show you the result of the Monte Carlo. So by the way, if you don't know how to run the script that I shared with you guys for Monte Carlo, you basically put the code inside this file and it needs to be in the root of your project. And then in the terminal, you simply say Python and then the name of the file, which for me is test Monte Carlo, right? And inside this file, you want to make sure you've selected the correct symbol, exchange, the time frame, and the name of the strategy and the data routes in case you are using which this strategy is and also give it a starting or ending date, the number of scenarios you want to run and things like that. But anyways, let's go here. Now, this is the result. The original has a PNL of 30%, the sharp of 2.64 and the rate of 100 exactly what I just displayed you from within the dashboard of the Jesse framework but if we look at the best 5% so it goes as well as 3.74 the win rate is still 100% in the median the win rate is 95% so that's still really high and it looks wonderful the sharp ratio for the median is 1.19 so again this looks really really awesome right but wait a minute let's take a look at the chart and this is how it looks like. Now, the thing is, most of them are indeed doing great, but some of them, not only they're not doing great, but they're actually going bananas. Like, this doesn't make any sense. The equity curve, even though it used to do really good, at some point, it goes straight to zero. Some of them did good until here, and then they went straight to zero. So why is this happening? Because if the strategy has a stop loss, which it does, this shouldn't be happening, right? So let's go to the code of the strategy and you see when the position opens, I was submitting both the stop loss and the take profit, but I also had this line. Now, by the way, this wasn't here and that's actually what's wrong with it. Right. So we also had this line, which is the update position method of Jesse, which basically means once another candle closes after I already have an open position, I want to do something. So in here, I'm checking if it's a short position, which it is because it's a short only position. I'm updating my stop loss. Now, when you do this, basically you're creating some kind of trailing stop, right? Because on every new candle, you're updating your stop loss. Now, remember, this is short position, right? So I want to bring down my stop loss. So as soon as the price goes up again, I will close it, right? So I'm using this syntax. So the stop loss equals the quantity of the current position, which makes sense. And then as the price, I'm saying the minimum of either the average stop loss, which in this case means the previous stop loss price that we had. Now in the beginning, we submitted here, right? So for a short position, the stop loss is being this. So the current price plus two times the ATR, but either this or if we've already updated it, so this will give us the average price. Now the average Q 
keyword here works only if you have multiple surplus prizes, but in this case we don't, we only have one, right? So again, it will give us that prize and the big comma. Now the big comma is returning the values of the comma indicator with the period of 42. That's it, basically. Now, I was also selecting the current candles, but the syntax isn't really true. Like I could have just done this, by the way, because I'm using the same time frame, so this could have been just this. But anyways, I don't want to go through this exact syntax or intro or exit rules of the strategy. I just want to show this, that basically I was updating my sub loss. So either this value, which is like a moving average, right? And the average is sub loss price. So I was just saying that give me whichever is lower. So why is this happening? So it goes really well, but then it goes to zero, right? And the win rate is 100%. So I figured what's happening here. Basically, I'm updating my stop loss price very soon after the position opens. So we can assume that this stop loss that we had here doesn't really matter. And the new price was being either the previous price, which of course would have been fine, right? Or this big comma value here. So the only thing that could have caused things to go wrong was this. And then I figured, you see, this is supposed to be a moving average. So what if the value of it is actually below the current price. And if that's happening, then it is no longer a stop loss, right? So because if the current price is here and it's a short position, so your stop loss should always be high, right? For example, in here. But if you suddenly put it in here, then again, it is no longer a stop loss, right? So it is a limit order. So it is waiting for the price to go here. So it would be your take profit order. But what if the price went up? then your limit order will stay here forever. And because you keep getting losses, then your equity curve will go to zero. So that was what was happening here. So the fix was to simply do this, to add this value here to say, if the big comma is bigger than the current price, I wanna do this to make sure it is not below the current price. And when I did this, then the equity curve went from this to this. So you see now, instead of like 30%, I'm making 5%. Although to be fair, the max return went down from minus 8% to minus 4%. So it's still not that bad. In fact, the win rate is still 70%, which is good. And the sharp ratio is 1.29, which again is good, but it isn't this. It's not like 100% good anymore, right? And more importantly, the strategy is safe to trade now. So if you are using a technique like what I was doing in this strategy, using a trailing stop loss, chances are you might also get some things wrong. And maybe in your single back test, you don't see that things are going wrong. And Monte Carlo could actually save you from taking a huge loss at some point in the future. So that's it guys, I just wanted to share this experience with you because from now on I will never forget about this and I will definitely run Monte Carlo every single time before going live. Now this is a new type of video that I just did so let me know what you guys think. If you enjoyed the video please give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you in the next one.